So we're going to talk about uh, filing comments on uh, FCC proposed rulemakings. I've, I've done this many times over the course of the years. Um, the only period when I wasn't doing that is when I was uh, in the ARO boardroom. I was vice director for nine years. And one of the rules when you're a, a on the board of ARRL is you can't file your own comments. You have to you know, let the league do the filing. But uh, outside of that, I mean, starting back in the in the uh, 70s uh, and earlier, I, I was filing comments on things. And uh, and in some cases, we got traction on it. So we're going to talk a couple first about kind of the process. And then we're going to talk a little at the end about content. The Administrative Procedures Act applies to all government agencies, and that includes the Federal Communications Commission. That act governs, among other things, how an agency's rulemaking process has to work. They can't just cook something up, pass a rule, and spring it on everybody. Uh, the Administrative Procedures Act requires public notice and opportunities for comment. Uh, it also specifies timing how long you have uh, to uh, expose these things to comment, and when the comments have to be in, what the deadlines are. Uh, to, one thing you should note is that the Administrative Procedures Act does not require the agency to come to a timely decision. Um, uh, case in point, ARRL has a couple of petitions with the FCC that go back to uh, probably at least six or seven years when I was on the board, and the FCC has not acted in, on them in all that time. Uh, a couple of those had to do with um, uh, kind of returning uh, the 75 meter, 80 meter band to the uh, uh, mode limits that we had before uh, and eliminating the uh, archaic baud rate limitation on digital data uh, to be replaced with a bandwidth limitation. And uh, you know we thought these things would get timely action, but it's been years and years and we're to the point of trying to get Congress to force the FCC to do something here. So um, just because something shows up doesn't mean it's going to get decided in a short period of time. But that said, a lot of things actually do get decided fairly quickly after the uh, notice and comment period. So how does one how do one of these things get in front of the FCC in the first place? Well, the FCC may initiate an inquiry on their own. They'll call a notice of in, notice of inquiry, or they actually just make a, a proposed rulemaking internally. Usually, a notice of inquiry will will be a, ga a fact gathering, and they'll get input from the public and and various experts and various groups, uh, and then. Uh, from that, they may decide, well, let's go ahead and propose a rule or let's not propose the rule. Uh, so that's internal generation. But proposals can also be generated externally by third parties. And those could be individuals, could be businesses, organizations like ARRL. Um, I've seen uh, proposals on amateur radio matters from individuals who say, you know, I think you should require everybody to give both call signs whenever you do identification and, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, most of them don't go anywhere. But anybody can submit a petition for rulemaking. Now, the FCC, once they get that, they may look at it and say, you know, we've addressed this in, in prior in prior uh, exposures and, and prior uh, rulings. So we'll just dismiss it out of hand because it's just duplicating what we've already done. Or they may say, okay, let's uh, put it out in a notice of proposed rulemaking and let's get some public comment on it. And once the public comment happens, uh, it first, well, first thing they publish in the federal register and, the Fed and that uh, basically says where you file the comments and uh, when the comments have to be submitted, a typical window for comments is 30 days from the time it's published in the Federal Register. Uh, note that all submitted comments are public. So your name and your comments and everything will be out there uh, in perpetuity, more or less, for the world to see. So when we get to the, uh, when we get to the uh, content part of this, you'll see why it's important to uh, uh, maintain professionalism when you're uh, generating your comments. And then uh, usually after the comment deadline, 
there's a period for reply comments, often shorter. In this case, it's 15 days. Okay, and that means you look at the comments other people wrote and you see that they commented on something that, uh, or they proposed a comment that was factually inaccurate. You can go in and say, this is incorrect. Here are the facts and here's why we think it's it's right. Um, so uh, there's a lot of back and forth and there's a little bit of gamesmanship too. Often the, the big players uh, won't, file their comments until the very last day for uh, initial comments so that there's not enough time for the applicants, um, uh, the petitioners, to try to use the initial comment period to, to uh, defeat or delay, uh, you know, counter the arguments made by the commenting party. So uh, I, I put mine in a day or so ahead just to make sure it got in. And if they want to counter it, they can try. So based on the content of the petition and the comments that come in, the supporting evidence, uh, the FCC may do any number of things. They may issue a report and order. That means, okay, here's the new rule and it takes effect uh, so many days from the time it's published in the Federal Register, maybe 30 days from the time it's published or some future date depending on how much modification has to be done to existing equipment, for example. They may give you a six months or a year. Um, they may modify the proposal and say, well, okay, this part seems to make sense. That part doesn't. We're going to modify it and put it out for more exposure or then go to a, a modified report and order. Or they may dismiss the proposal and say, no, nope, uh, based on what we've heard, this is not a good idea. Uh, we're going to dismiss it with prejudice, which means you can come back and try again if you fix the things that the public noted were wrong with it, or without prejudice, I'm sorry, well, without prejudice means you can come back again. With prejudice means uh, we don't want to hear from you again on this subject. And of course, the fourth, the fourth option is they may just sit for a couple of years and not do anything. So who can file comments? Any individual, any business, any organization or group. You do not need an attorney. Obviously, the folks who are uh, uh, usually the proponents of these things, especially major changes, they will use communications attorneys, uh, folks who hang around Washington, D.C. and are specialists in this sort of thing um, and can cite the various laws and regulations and the history of what the FCC has done before. But if you're, uh, you know, if you're reasonably uh, well read and you're familiar with the uh, with the uh, proposal, and you have some cogent comments to make, you don't need an attorney. You could just write it on your own. So let's look at the mechanics here. Uh, the FCC many years ago went to what's called an electronic comment filing system, or ECFS. This makes it very easy to file a comment. Uh, there's a standard filing where you basically you will uh, format a document and uh, you then attach it. Or there's an express filing, which basically you type or paste your text into a box and either way in it goes. Um, they also have a very neat search function and you can use uh, to uh, <clears throat> uh, use the search function to go and look for other people's um, other people's filings. If you're going to submit a standard filing, this is kind of where it starts. You have to give the uh, proceeding number, um, the name of the filer. That's you. If you have an attorney they're using, they have to put it in there, but that's optional. Uh, most of us won't be using an attorney for that. Your email address, uh, type of filing, that typically would be comment or reply comment. And then continuing down there, if you have any of these uh, ID numbers, report numbers, you put them in. Um, but you have to put in an address, city, state, zip code. And then if you have a file, you just you would uh, drop it right in here if you're going to do a, a regular formal comment. Here's a sample of a formal comment. This is the, the first half page from my six page filing in connection with the uh, shortwave modernization coalitions 
petition to run wideband digital 20 kilowatt stations in our HF bands. Here's a sample of a express comment where they just type in. This is uh, uh, Gordon Gibby, uh, KX4Z. Uh, Gordon is uh, no stranger to the folks here on Rat Pack. He's given talks on a number of things, including uh, designing your exercises to uh, comply with the Homeland Security's exercise evalu and evaluation program. He's given a talk on the um, uh, the HIPAA regulations and how they do when they do or don't apply to amateur radio operators volunteering with healthcare agencies. Uh, so he uh, he decided to use a a um, express comment. Now note that when you do an express comment. There's no formatting. You, you, you lose your paragraphing and everything else. It just becomes a one long text file. Uh, mine, you know, I prefer to, to do it so I could say, here's point one, here's point two, here's point three, here's point four, and kind of organize it that way, make it easier to read. But you can use either one, whichever, whichever suits you. Uh, other than where you paste the thing, the process is pretty much the same. I mentioned the search function. You can just put in uh, the, uh, in this case, rulemaking RM-11953. You hit enter and it says, oh yeah, I recognize that one. That's the shortwave modernization coalition peti uh, petition for rulemaking to amend the rules to allow fixed long distance HF stations, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then you hit search. And when you hit search, you're going to see all the filings in this case, uh, this is as of yesterday, there were 787 filings, most of them comments. And here's Gordon's comment right here. Mine is a couple of pages down. Uh, this one's from John Hudson, who's uh, uh, the uh, auxiliary communications coordinator for the uh, California's Office of Emergency Services. And he, uh, uh, I talked to him and he agreed and got permission to file actually uh, on behalf of the California Office of Emergency Services rather than just as an individual. So that should bear some weight, which would be great. So uh, this is just part of the page. You go down, there'll be buttons for pages two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, however many, and you can indicate how many you want to see per page and uh, scan it accordingly. Uh, this number has gone up considerably since yesterday on this particular notice of proposed rulemaking. Any questions so far? You see the pro the process. So, so I just if I clarifying question if I can. Yes. So when you when you write uh, individual, I, I get the individual part. So have you found it more prudent for an individual write or to write on behalf of a group? Uh, well, I don't know that I can't tell whether one has any more or less effect than another. You know, a well written comment that is factually based uh, should bear a lot of weight even if uh, even if it's only coming from an individual. Now, uh, we'll talk in comment uh, in the content section a little bit about uh, what may influence their uh, their opinion of your of your uh, document. But okay. um, if you may you may have a radio club and uh, file on right. behalf of the folks in the radio club. Uh, so let's talk about content here. Um, first thing, take the time to read the proposal thoroughly. Some of these things are really long, but you need to at least look at what they're doing and look at the proposals themselves, which usually include specific amending language that they would like to see in the FCC regulations. Um, they also uh, usually will describe why they're doing this, why they think it's a public benefit, and uh, sometimes that's a real stretch and sometimes it's pretty obvious. Uh, don't just rely on what someone else, someone else told you is in this uh, filing. So may, take the time to look at it yourself. You may spot some things that other people haven't spotted that will allow you to make some cogent comments. Um, take a look through a sample of the other filed comments that have already uh, gone in. Uh, you may find some good ideas that you can expand on You'll also see, uh, you'll start to see the difference between um, really unsophisticated comments and well-thought-out ones. And you want to make sure that yours is one of those well-thought-out ones. 
Uh, think about not just the impact on you and your operation, but think about the impact on other users as well. In this case, you know, they're talking about a big, you know, most of the HF bands, I mean, two to 27 megahertz. And in addition to amateur, of course, we have um, a lot of government uh, agencies. We have, you know, the shares program, we have uh, op secure and uh, stay net uh, frequencies, uh, things that are used for uh, continuity of operations, continuity of government um, that are backups. And so, uh, if there are, uh, for example, I mean, I'm involved with uh, uh, shares and and with the uh, with the uh, California Emergency Services nets, and I included a section there where you know I actually sat down the, the, those shares frequencies and some of those others are not published; they're confidential. But I could look at the band segments that the uh, applicants were proposing the, uh, to use. And I could see that they fell right on top of almost every shares frequency, almost every ALE frequency, almost every interoperability frequency. And uh, they wouldn't, because they're not published, they wouldn't even know that they're there and know to avoid them. So uh, I included that, you know, and I made that um, uh, actually more important in my comments. I emphasize those a lot more than the impact on amateur radio, because I figure there are going to be plenty of hams weighing in, but I wanted to weigh in on other um, other users, um, and some hams are parts of are part of those systems too. So, take a look at not just your operations, but others that you're aware of that are important that could be disrupted uh, by this proposal. Um, if you have some relevant background. Uh, it would be good to put a, a brief comment at the start. You know, I'm commenting uh, uh, as a 56-year amateur radio operator and a volunteer with a, uh, uh, a uh, state office of emergency services and a major municipality uh, for, com for disaster communications. Or uh, I, uh, uh, I hold a leadership position in a volunteer group that provides uh, uh, disaster communications in hurricanes and tornadoes and uh, or for uh, uh, hospitals in all of the state of XYZ. Okay, so any of that, uh, whether it's professional or volunteer capacity, I would pop that in at the start just in a sentence or two, so that they know that you're not just, you know, Joe Blow, you're you, you actually have some uh, a stake in the game, and you're familiar with the users of this uh, spectrum so that you can make more informed comments. Uh, unless you have authorization to do so, make clear that you are not speaking for any organization. You could say, you know, I'm a volunteer with the California Office of Emergency Services and the OES thinks, nope, I can't do that unless they tell me I'm the one that's gonna do that and, and they didn't. So you have to make sure that you're not speaking for another entity. You have to get permission if you're going to do that or find the right person. It was probably a better attack. Find the right person who is who can get authorization and have them write it. Um, I usually start up front. Uh, you know, I'm writing in opposition to uh, RM 11953. Um, and, you know, I, I, I this happens in all sorts of correspondence. I see people writing you know, and they write two pages and you have to get to the end to find out what they're really saying. You know, I really support this or oppose it or whatever. Put it up front and then you can close with it at the end after you've made your detail arguments. Uh, try to avoid language entitlement language like you sometimes hear from hams who have uh, issues with neighborhoods, you know, hey, it's my right. I can do this if I want to. Yeah. You know, that's really not going to fly very well. Um, try to be objective, not emotional. Um, uh, avoid using slang if you can. Use proper terminology. Um, and you, you will start to see that as you read some of the more professionally written comments uh, on this same subject. So there again, when I say look through some of those um, uh, prior filings, those prior comments before you start writing your own, not only for ideas, but get an idea of how these things are referred to 
and uh, that will add some a little gravitas to your comments. Um, if you have evidence, if you have experience, or you're familiar with a particular aspect of the law, uh, you can cite that as part of the basis for your position and your argument or your opposition or your support for this particular function. So here's a here's a bad example. Okay, the garbage from this system will ruin my 80 meter dxing. Okay, well, it may that may be accurate. But it's not particularly impressive. But if you say the likelihood of interference to licensed services is high because, and then you give your, you know, your quantitative or qualitative rationale, uh, you know, that reads a little better, and uh, it's more likely to not be dismissed out of hand. So this is a short talk, but um, let's go ahead and. Uh, open it up to questions and comments, and let's see if we can uh, go from there. Uh, Barry, what are we doing there in, in, uh, in chat? Okay, one question. What if somebody has already made comments that you agree with and did it better? Can you just say ditto? <laughs> yes, you could say, uh, uh, I'm writing in support of the comments made by XYZ, um, uh, as they have noted, and, uh, you know, their notations are consistent with my experience, um, that this kind of operation is very susceptible to interference from broadband operations, whatever it may be. So, yeah, you can, you can support, you can oppose something that somebody else has written. Uh, if you can, ideally, you know, if you can add your own, uh, observations to it to say, you know, this is consistent with the experience I've had as a uh, volunteer radio operator with California Office of Emergency Services, um, something like that, then, then you're adding, you're adding evidence, you're adding um, material to the point that has already been made, and then you're reinforcing it. Good question. All right, Gene, you want to come on? Uh, yes, uh, for at least three months now, I have been trying to access the FCC site. Basically, uh, my license isn't due for renewal, but I want to get a GMR license. But FCC has been down for a long time. There Does was a period of really several know weeks. What's going on? Yeah, well, there was a period of several weeks when all the uh, all the uh, uh, licensing, universal licensing system was down. And uh, you may remember uh, reading or seeing on the news about a hack of uh, government uh, computers. We believe that the FCC was one of the agencies affected by that hack. Uh, but that really was, that, you know, that was down for a week or two. Uh, that wouldn't explain three months. Uh, I'm not aware of, I mean, I know that uh, license applications were being filed and acted on on a regular basis except for that two-week period uh, and if you're going for a gmrs license of course you, you already have a uh, a, uh, a federal uh, a federal registration number an frn uh, you use the same frn for that license as you would with your amateur license you only you're only supposed to have one frn uh so right. yeah yeah i i understand that and uh Again, I don't know what what the issues are. I, I heard that story too about the possible hacking. I understand that. That's getting to be pretty much common with anything doing with any government agency nowadays. But uh, it's just been, I mean, a, a struggle. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I, I don't think, unless you know something otherwise, that I can call them and try to do it. I don't think so, but if somebody else knows a different way, please let me know. Okay, well, uh, my my uh, GMRS license uh, goes back quite a ways and I don't have any experience in the last couple of years since it's a, now a 10 year license. Um, but if anybody else on the call has, a, uh, has knowledge of that, uh, you know, speak up. Oh, I, I appreciate your input and answer to my questions. It's, 
Like it's just something I got to personally struggle with, but I'll get there eventually. Yeah. Are, are you having trouble connecting with them? Or are you having trouble uh, navigating get, the menu or are you just not I, finding what you I can what get you to this site. I can get to this site. No problem. I put in my FON and sometimes it won't recognize my, my password. So I change the password. Then when I get an email back with how to change the password, it's just a very like two, three sentence long string of stuff that I can't even copy and paste. Uh, it just, it just hmm. makes no sense. It might be just, maybe it's just me, but I'm just like struggling. You, you might want to check if, if you've got a group uh, that regularly does license exams and uh -huh. uh, particularly if it's, if it's a local, uh, uh, a local VEC, uh, you know, they, they may be familiar enough with the process for amateurs that it, they may also know how it works for uh, GMRS. I never thought about that, but that makes sense. Thanks a lot. And I oh. got, We'll see and a few that I can hit up in this local area. Yeah, because they, they may do enough of that. They are familiar with it. Scott, okay, uh, what else do we have? Scott's got Thank his, you. Scott's got his hand up. May have more to offer here. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Marty. Hey, Gene. Hi, Scott. So I can add a little bit of insight to this. Okay. So I had some issues with my FCC uh license and grms and my accounts got screwed up with my frn number and the whole email process clearly sucked um i called them on the phone and got a hold of somebody and they literally walked me through it held my hand and said okay get on your computer type this do this and they were working right back with me and wow. got me squared away within 10 15 minutes wow well, that's and that was cool. a direct. That, that was an actual phone number to call the FCC. Yeah, I I called. It said help desk or help number. I called it. Right. I, I didn't sit on hold that long, and I got got a hold of somebody, and she was super helpful. Okay. Well, guess what? Uh, what what's on my list to do tomorrow morning? <laughs> Very good. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Not a problem. And, and you know, it may have just been an anomaly. Maybe I got somebody who cared. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but again, that was my experience. And um, it, they cleared up a world of problems. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Scott. Gene, uh, I don't see any more hands up. We got anything in, in chat, Barry? Nope. All righty. Okay, well, just just to bring you up on this particular petition, uh, for those not familiar with it, um, a, a group of uh, stock traders uh, were applying to use um, wideband digital high power, we're talking 20 kilowatts, um, big stations with big gain antennas to uh, keep the market information flowing between different locations uh, really for the purpose so that if you, uh, you know, if, if you find that a stock is selling at one price on the Frankfurt exchange and another in New York, uh, you could quickly make a trade and, you know, buy low, sell high. And it's called arbitrage and, and basically make money on the spread between two different locations. And because you know, RF is almost instantaneous compared with satellite or the uh, cable or anything like that. Uh, they would get a jump on the competition and make more money. So this is really a money play. Now, as you can imagine, if you do that with, you know, computerized programs, uh, you're talking about some pretty big volumes that you could be looking at literally billions of dollars. Well, when billions of dollars are at stake, billions of dollars find their way around and uh, so uh, this is not something that we can assume that is going to be dismissed just because it doesn't make sense. Uh, we hope it will. But, you know, those folks where there's a lot of money involved, they can hire the best attorneys. Uh, they can do what's called ex parte communications, where they meet privately with the FCC uh, commissioners or their staff. 
and try to give them additional information. Now, ex parte com uh, communications have to be disclosed, but those sorts of things aren't, aren't public. So, um, you know, we just have to make sure that we rally uh, as much expertise as we can. And I've seen some really excellent comments so far that will, I hope, uh, steer the uh, decision in the right direction. But uh, the comment period expired yesterday. It was extended two days. And now uh, the uh, reply comment period begins. That's uh, 15 days. So by August 15th, uh, everybody's going to have had their say. Uh, again, if you want to go and take a look at the proposal yourself, it's RM for rulemaking-11953. And you bring that up. Uh, if you go to the ARL webpage, it's probably pushed over to the right-hand column of the news now, but you'll see, you know, HF financial institution proposal. And uh, when you go down to the story, at the bottom of the story, there's a link to actually read the proposal itself. And they have pages and pages of VOA cap uh, uh, program uh, simulations and so on to try and prove that there won't be significant uh, it, significant interference but again that's being pretty well debunked by some of the expert comments in there uh, jim i see you have a hand up go ahead uh yes i was just curious have you heard anything from the arrl because i was at a, a meeting with a couple of guys that are working for the arrl and they seem to think it's not going to be a problem and they they seem to be like going along with it did you hear the same thing or what no i haven't heard that they're going along with it at all um I did hear that uh, the ARL CEO, David Minster, thought that it wasn't going to be a big problem. But again, the league did unleash its its legal team and its its technical team to file a substantial opposition. So um, the league's official position is, in fact, uh, one of opposing this proposal. And that, I think, is the right answer. OK, thank you. You know, they, they may say that they think it's going nowhere just because of the content of it. But again, you know, money talks and uh, uh, it, it behooves us to uh, react strongly and promptly and uh, why, with widespread commentary. And uh, so between the league and uh, 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 Dr. Lappin, one of the members of the Technical Advisory Committee, and several other really excellent co uh, comments that have been thrown in there. We hope that we've shed enough light on this. Oh, and actually the cable television industry weighed in saying, uh, you know, the petitioners say that they haven't had any, any uh, verified interference during their tests uh, under experimental license. Uh, we beg to differ. We've had huge uh, interference problems with them and we get together with them. We change frequencies, something happens and then we get it again. So, uh, you know, any representation that they haven't had any reports of, of uh, interference are really not accurate. Uh, that was putting it kindly. Um, and so we, you know, a number of different, uh, a group of uh, 50 or 60 uh, astronomy professors where they're looking at, you know, uh, intergalactic signals and so on. Those are the sorts of things that would get wiped out with the, uh, the high uh, out of band emission limits that are being proposed by the proponents. So the applicants, uh, so opposition is coming from a variety of corners, not just from amateur radio. Okay, I might ask if you got a camera, uh, when you come on, please turn your camera on. It helps with the video a whole lot. Are there anybody, is there anybody else that's there? How would you any comments, Barry? We're all good in chat. Okay, Gene, you got your hand up. Go ahead, Gene. Gene, go ahead. Okay, y'all see me? Yes. Okay, uh, is there a specific, I know that just about everybody on the FCC boards are uh, appointed, they're not elected, but is there one elected government official at the federal level, obviously, that is responsible for the FCC? No, the FCC uh, budget is uh, uh, controlled by a subcommittee of the House. Uh, the House, uh, 
and also a committee of the Senate, uh, the, the Commerce Committee. Uh, there are subcommittees that deal with their budgets and their procedures in both houses of Congress. Um, and normally, we don't go to them if uh, the normal you know, comment procedure and so on is working the way we think it should. There have been a few times when we have gone to uh, members of Congress, uh, the League has, that is, to say, hey, you know, we're not getting any action on this or, uh, you know, they're ignoring they're ignoring these facts and uh, uh, they're working with flawed data. Um, in one case, I think they actually got when the FCC was testifying before Congress, they got a member of Congress who was favorable to us to ask them point blank, blank, why haven't you done anything on this for n years? You know, so I mean that that's kind of a, you know, let's uh, put a crowbar under the rock and see if we can move it. But uh, okay. for for routine matters, no, you don't go to Congress first. Okay, just just uh, for my personal uh, education here. How many members of Congress and the Senate are actual amateur radio operators? Anybody know? Uh, two or three at any one That's time. Great, really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the most the most notable one back, back many years ago, of course, was uh, Barry Goldwater. Yes, yes, uh, indeed. K7 UGA. Uh, and he carried the water for us quite a, few, a number of times in the Senate. Um, there is a... Uh, Congressman from Oregon, who is a licensed amateur, and he's on the uh, he is on the relevant House uh, committee, um, but there aren't too many. Okay, well, I guess the league's got to get out there and do some recruiting on Capitol well, Hill. The problem, yeah, but who who wants to run for Congress? <laughs> you know, you you need a lot more than a clear head to do that. You need a big well, bank account well, and and a, not and to a, run for Congress, but to get the people in Congress. Signed up for a, a, a license class, a license. license class on Capitol Hill. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, there you go. I'm sure there's hams in the area that can do it. Yeah. Well, I know that we've done that with uh, some uh, local government officials, you know, here in California. I'm sure many, plenty of other places around the country where, uh, you know, they're interested. They see what we can do based on observing our support functions. And they say, hey, you know, could I get a license? And they say, yes, we can help you through it. And then sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes they end up becoming fairly active. Okay. Well, I guess it's uh, baby steps right now, but I'm sure somebody in that area will come up with a recruiting method to get them licensed and uh, see where it sticks, so to speak. All right. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, well, you all get to go to dinner or whatever a little early tonight. Oh, it's starting to look that way. Barry, do you see anything in chat? We are all set so far. All right. So, well, we covered about 40 minutes. Yeah, let's open it up for some comments here. You might got some comments out there. What do you mean, Dan? I was eating dinner while uh, while listening. Well, that's why his camera's off. Because <laughs> he didn't bring enough to share. That's, like, okay, I, that's good, Marty. <laughs> didn't, didn't bring enough for everybody. Uh, it's kind of hard to pass it through the screen. <laughs> yep. He's going to bring the ice cream. <laughs> one, one last thing, folks. I guess it's official. ALRL has uh, recognized me. I don't know if you can see that. As a technical specialist for this area. Oh, very good! Congrats and thank uh, thank and you for serving that volunteer function. Uh, by the way, that is uh, races too. Very good. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, have we're on the last one, but uh, one of our Rat Pack organizers, Michelle Thompson, who also sits on the FCC's technical advisory committee, organized a uh, a Rat Pack session, which was a kind of a gathering for. Uh, section technical managers and technical specialists around the country. And she had a, a big volume of uh, participation and it went really well. And I think that is going to be repeated from time to time. So keep an eye out on the Rat Pack schedule for another one of those coming up sometime maybe later this year. I certainly will do. And I'll do some lookup to see if uh, when that was and see if there's any like uh recordings of that yes uh, yes all those things are recorded uh you can go to the youtube site 
or go to the uh, spreadsheet on the on the Rat Pack channel, and uh, you will see that it, it goes back was about two three months ago, Dan. Mm -hmm. Been a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, you can you can revisit all the discussion there. We have a couple of the technical folks who are regulars on here, and uh, we appreciate it. we get some great input from them on a variety of subjects. So uh, it's it's good company to be in. Well, it's certainly something I'm going to be doing some uh, looking up. I got a lot of my uh, research tomorrow concerning Rat Pack, but uh, I enjoy it. Okay, very good. Hey, my buddy Jeff WA4AW has got his hands up. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff, we'll need to unmute you. And uh, have you got something for us? Uh, no, uh, Marty. Uh, I did not put my hand up. I was uh, taking oh. in your very excellent presentation tonight. And, uh, good to see everybody. And uh, special, special hi to you. A long time. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, um, I, there's a, a for some reason there's a big hand icon next to your name. So. Oh, it's all right. I don't. I don't see it on, on this end. I don't see it. <laughs> well. So somebody slapped a sign on your back. Oh well, <laughs> nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good good to hear from you, Jeff. Good good to see you as well, buddy. Miss you, miss you on the board. Indeed. All right. Anybody else got anything to comment on? Uh, just thanks for an excellent presentation. Very useful to uh, hear an outline of the process, and then very well put. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I say it was kind of impromptu we were talking a couple nights ago and i was going to do something else and i thought you know this subject is, is never really addressed very well and and there really wasn't much guidance this time on the league website so i said let's let's cover it a little bit and uh again go back and read some of those comments you'll 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 see what makes a good comment and you'll see some really uh strong arguments that uh, uh may you know may uh cause you to uh you know throw in some uh, reply comments and and that never hurts we got plenty of time we got two weeks to read whatever got two weeks yeah a lot of reading <laughs> yeah, there's only seven or eight hundred comments no problem <laughs> if i could add one thing you talked about putting information down about yourself in the beginning <clears throat> you could parse that into two issues really standing and credibility Standing is, you know, I use the HF bands or my company uses the HF bands or the OEM does. And then the, the, the credibility part would be, um, you know, I've been a ham radio for many years or I'm an engineer or, you know, whatever other uh, things you have going for. So it's, it's kind of two parts there and both of them very important. Good point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. All right. All right. You can't let Marty go away this easy. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> D dinner's waiting for me <laughs> okay uh anybody else got any comments questions answers hey, Dan. yeah go Dan. ahead yeah uh we need to get some patches made up for rat pack <laughs> so on to stuff or hats something like that you know, i made some i don't know if you can see this or not but i made some pins a long time ago okay this is the larger of them and but it costs me more to mail those stupid things than it is to make them up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. Well, if you ever come out with some patch design or t-shirt design, please let us know. And I'm sure nobody will object to uh paying for them. Hey, no, there we go. Wear, wear, wear them patch. at the next ham fest. Yes. There you go. Excellent. Just Good idea, throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Yeah, this is an early one. Uh, Marty gets to Marty gets to eat, and the rest of us get to do what we need to do for fun. Yep. Anyway, everybody, have a good evening. All right. Seventy-three is everyone. All right.